Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Dr. Gary Severance with Henry Schein, and uh, this webinar today really focuses on something that every dental office should be concerned about and is addressing. Primarily, it's the air quality in our dental office with a focus on the COVID-19. It's very uh, a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Richard Greenwood, who is the founder and CEO of Eradicate using virus killer technology. I'm very excited about this. I've seen some of Richard's webinars around the world, and I'm very excited that this product is finally coming to North America or United States. With that, I'd like to welcome Richard Greenwood. Hello, everybody. My name is Richard Greenwood. Uh, as Gary said, I'm the CEO and founder of Radicate, uh, which is a specialist clean air technology company uh, that's been around a few years now. Uh, we're partnered with uh, a company in South Korea who are the original founders um, of the virus killer technology. Uh, the virus killer technology has been around since 2004 and uh, was a direct result funded by the South Korean government, but a direct result uh, from SARS coronavirus that hit South Korea pretty hard in 2003. Um, what I'm going to be doing uh, on this webinar is just addressing uh, air quality and particularly in dental offices and although we have a focus on COVID-19 I want to be a little bit more broad ranging than that. Um, so first and foremost let's look at what we're going to cover. Um, we're going to see what the problems are with, with air quality and then uh, how best uh, we can address them. Some things we can do uh, just by changing habits and then other things that we can possibly do by bringing in the use of technology. Um, so to start with, there are four disease transmission routes. Uh, we've got direct contact, which is touching uh, somebody directly with, with, with uh, an infection. We've got indirect contact, which is coming into contact with objects or surfaces where, where pathogens uh, are. Um, we have droplet, uh, so that's various different size droplets. I think we've all noticed uh, how this uh, COVID-19 has kind of gone from large droplets that infect surfaces to, to smaller droplets that, that stay in the air for some time uh, to now uh, aerosolized droplets being that this is an airborne disease, um, which leads us on to airborne which is still droplet, just very, very small uh, aerosolized droplets. Um, you'll find that, that in, in some countries, a lot is done for all four disease transmission routes, but really in the Western world, we concentrate on direct contact and indirect contact, but we don't do too much about droplet and airborne. There is obviously lots and lots of discussion uh, about masks uh, in, in different places, um, uh, advocate of masks absolutely um, because uh, they do have uh, a screen uh, not only for you helping to stop uh, getting the transmission of virus but also and primarily if you are infected and sometimes you don't know you are infected to stop you putting that virus out into the air and, and infecting other people. Um, so if we just look at these four disease transmission routes for a moment, when we talk about clean air technology, ultimately droplet and airborne disease transmission routes are, are, are what we're addressing. Um, for some years, uh, I've been stating, certainly with the Radicate technology, that if you control the flow of air properly, then you're also greatly reducing um, direct contact, but specifically indirect contact. So, so you're stopping settlement on surfaces. And uh, just recently, uh, six weeks ago, we did a, a test with some of the Radicate technology in Canada in an, a, a laboratory that, that's been set up uh, in accordance with the EPA guidelines. Um, and uh, we found that when we tested how much we reduce surface contamination with the right kind of technology and the right kind of airflow, and we'll get into that a little bit, a little bit just uh, to come. Um, we reduced surface contamination by over 99%. So really important for us to actually look at this because 
with the right technology and the right airflow, if you're stopping surface settlement, well, in between cleaning is when it's really dangerous on those surfaces. But with a result like 99%, it's a great reduction of indirect contact transmission routes or surface contamination uh, with the right kind of clean air technology, as well as reducing droplet and airborne. So for me, the right kind of clean air technology greatly reduces all disease transmission routes. A very important thing to note. We mentioned uh, at the very start there, it's not all about COVID-19. And in dentistry, it's absolutely not. Uh, being a dentist is regarded as, as one of the most unhealthy professions. And one of the reasons is because of everything that is airborne. So ultra-fine particles from, from drilling, uh, amalgam and mercury from, from the old style fillings, gases and, and, and toxins in the air, and, uh, you know, above all, microbial contamination. Uh, right now, there's obviously a focus on COVID-19, and rightly so. But, but dentistry as a whole is, for me, one of the sectors out there that should really, truly invest in clean air technology, not only to protect dentists and dental staff, but also patients that go in and then sit in that chair with their mouths open. One of the reasons, by the way, that I don't like visiting dentists, um, especially if they don't have uh, clean air technology. So normality, I, I don't think that, that we will ever go back to normality. It's ingrained into us now, a protection, a, a more hygienic uh, a, a level that we have to achieve in, in all sectors, in our home life, in our work life, and especially going to, to somewhere like a dentist. Um, but when we think about what we do as an indoor generation, and we've sealed ourselves up in these energy efficient boxes, any air pollution that we're creating indoors, well, it just carries on being indoors. So, so that pollution grows. We think we seal ourselves up in our boxes and we're safe from outside. But the reality is that indoor air pollution is two to, ti two to 10 times more polluted than outside. And that's because of what we create inside without the means of it to escape. So we will come on to ventilation, but part of, of a very key part of any clean air strategy is good ventilation. So the second part to this is spending money on an air pollution solution should deal with as much of the problem that we have identified as possible. And what are those problems? Well, if we look at it and break this up, three simple categories. So air contaminated with particulate matter, dust, pollen, dander. Then we go into air polluted with viruses, bacteria, mold, and fungus. And finally, extremely small particles, gases, and and if we look, how do we solve these problems? So quite commonly on the market, you'll see boxes with filters and fans, which commonly is known as an air purifier. And these attempt to trap all of the particles in the air. Um, is that efficient? Well, certainly with particulate matter, dust, pollen, dander, yes, we can use filters like HEPA filters, activated carbon filters. We're going to trap particles. Well, filters are very good at trapping bacteria, mold and fungus because they're the right size. But when we look at viruses, viruses are extremely small. And there are studies showing that aerosolized viruses will penetrate even HEPA filters. And the common method there is to use something like activated carbon to try and adsorb gases. And it's very effective. But those activated carbon filters, they last a very small amount of time, certainly not amount of time that most uh, manufacturers give on those filters. Air purification, as I mentioned, are filters with fans in boxes. And one of the big questions at the moment is, are filters effective of trapping COVID-19 virus? Well, if we look at this as being a standard filter arrangement, a pre-filter, HEPA filter, carbon filter in most uh, air purifiers, and perhaps look at uh, 
what kind of efficiency MERV filters, which are typically installed in HVAC systems, have on uh, pathogens, in particularly have on coronavirus, you'll see the higher the grade of the MERV filter, the more efficiency they have on coronavirus. Now, SARS coronavirus being a substitute for, for COVID-19, even very similar in size and envelope, um, at the highest MERV filter, we have 68% efficiency. Now, HEPA filters are more efficient, um, but there are independent studies there showing that aerosolized virus penetration of HEPA filters. And the question has to be that if we are taking a problem out of the air, we're taking it out of the breathing zone, and then we're processing it through a piece of clean air technology, should we then be putting any of that virus load back into that breathing zone? The reality is it takes a very small amount of that virus load to infect somebody. So for me, if we're going to state a solution for something like viruses, we have to show a single air pass kill rate, which is very, very different from what an air purifier will show, which is um, putting uh, their filtration device into a chamber test and saying after 60 minutes, there are no viruses left. It's very different from a single air pass test result. And, and that really is something that we're very passionate about and we feel should be the standard when we're talking about viruses and clean air technology. If we look at um, and technologies that we use for, for maybe uh, breaking the RNA of viruses or the DNA of bacteria or, or, or microbial contamination with mold and fungi, that there are various technologies on the market that are used. Um, some UV radiation, uh, UV radiation works uh, uh, very well with convection, i.e. with air that is naturally passing uh, ultraviolet lights um, because it takes time for UV radiation to, to destroy any microbial contamination or pathogens. Um, you can use UV radi radiation with forced airflow, but it's not as simple as just putting a UV light next to some filters. Um, photocatalytic oxidation, which is a process that we actually use, is the combination of UV radiation and a catalyst, typically titanium dioxide, um, and what you get there is uh, lots and lots of uh, oxidating hydroxyl radicals, as well as UV radiation, if UVC is used in this process. Um, radicate, the technology there uses UVC and, and lots and lots of layers of titanium dioxide to create reactor chambers um, that can give single air pass kill rates uh, on as it says, a single air pass. Um, we can also use heat, plasma, ionization, all of these things are used. But as I stated, the tricky part to this is when you're forcing air uh, at speed past any technology, it's quite difficult then to get that, that kind of kill rate on a single air pass. Um, which, which is a downfall of a lot of technologies because um, the dwell time with that forced airflow quite often means that air has to go through the technology uh, several times. One of the most important things about any clean air technology is airflow. So you'll hear it mentioned lots in, 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 in dentistry and all other sectors room air exchanges. What are the room air exchanges for this device? And yes, that's important because, because it's a calculation of being able to say, we put a piece of technology into that space and, and ideally, how often do we pull all of the air from that space through that piece of technology? Well, it, there is more of a science to this because if as many common air purifiers, you pull in the air around the base and you deliver that air out of the top, you're creating this, this almost mushroom. And the air closest to that piece of technology is going through that piece of technology a lot more than air that is maybe 10 feet away. And, and so 
efficient air exchanges is a very different thing to, to room air exchanges. And so for me, the starting point to any clean air technology should be airflow. What I'm trying to show in this image here is that you can see a piece of radicate technology here pulls in polluted air to the ground. Um, in, 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 in high footflow areas, ideally you want to do this for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first being that you're pulling air out of the breathing zone uh, and, and down to the ground below knee height, contaminated air, and also stopping people walking in and that pluming air from coming up out of the ground and, and infecting people and, and, and objects and surfaces. But going back to this image, you'll see if there is no single air pass test result on this device, we're pulling in contaminated air there at the ground, and then we're delivering potentially some of that contaminated air back to the breathing zone. In this case, to, to, to a breathing zone, which, which could be extremely dangerous. So a real difference in, in test results that are chamber tests and single air pass test results. Typically, the way air purification devices will combat toxic air is with activated carbon filters. They work very well when they're new. So the way activated carbon works is you can see here, it's a series of pores, pores, nanopores, mes mesopores, micropores, like a series of veins. But if the pore at the top of the activated carbon filter gets blocked, then, then that is a redundant piece of activated carbon. And this happens very quickly. Certainly, I think in most cases, a lot quicker than uh, manufacturers will give on their activated carbon filters, the lifespan. There is another way of dealing with this. So an activated carbon filter is in a stable equilibrium, but if that's put in an unstable equilibrium, i.e. in the presence of hydroxyl radicals, ultraviolet radiation, the activated carbon can last up to 20 times longer. The other way of, of this is not just adsorption, but also breaking gases which is something that hydroxyl radicals will do from the PCO process, for example, and surround that gas, break them to their, to, to their common uh, molecule state of carbon dioxide and water. So gases and VOCs, uh, if you're going to invest into clean air technology, try and get technology that is as broad ranging as it can be. Again, limited to what we can trap just with filters. There are technologies out on the market that will filter plus then process, not only trying to destroy uh, pathogens, but also trying to neutralize things like uh, toxic gases. Airflow, we mentioned it just now. The starting point for any piece of clean air technology is airflow, not just air force, so you put a, a big air purifier on its highest fan setting, and it might give you uh, 10 meters uh, per second, 20 meters per second of airflow. But the reality is that if that airflow is not efficient, then you're better off having a lower airflow that is controlling that flow a lot more effectively and efficiently and then you are getting more efficient air exchanges out of your room, not just a calculation showing which unit has the biggest fan. Big fans and big airflow also come with big noise, so just watch out for that. So the starting point should be airflow. The objective to this is pulling air out of the breathing zone, especially with regards to, to pathogens and COVID-19, pulling the air out of the breathing zone, processing it through a piece of technology that can prove that on the outer part of that technology, there are no viruses left or, or certainly no viruses alive. And then in a very effective way, dispersing that clean air back into the breathing zone. So something important to note here is that airflow and air exchanges are two very different things. And creating the wrong airflow can cause a further infection risk. 
and there's lots of studies now coming out about this one in particular that happened in a Chinese restaurant showing a recirculating air conditioning system and they they followed the airflow and mapped out how patients how people in the restaurant were infected so so very important is the note about airflow especially when we're dealing with or trying to deal with pathogens such as COVID-19. Here is a, a diagram of how Radicate will solve uh, the airflow within somewhere like a, a waiting area. Um, you'll see there that contaminated air is being dragged into the ground and once it reaches below kind of knee height, that contaminated air. Then above seated head height with a unit like a virus killer 102 or 103, we put out in an equal direction uh, clean air, which is giving you this, this kind of laminar airflow, putting clean air out, taking any pollution out of the breathing zone, putting it to the ground and taking that danger away. We know that with the air going into a radicate system, going through filters and our technology has that single air pass kill rate. So very comfortable that clean air is replacing polluted air and we get this constant cycle. The importance of airflow is like this. It might take 10 minutes for the air within a given space to get through a machine. But with the right kind of airflow, within seconds, you're taking that danger away and controlling it. So you're taking it away in this instance and pushing it to the ground. So that is the big difference with the right kind of airflow. Airflow is key. And it's something that more and more clean air technologies need to pay attention to and talk about. So one of the misconceptions, and we touched on it earlier, is that we think the tighter our building envelope is, that the safer we are. We shut ourselves inside and that pollution is outside, especially if you buy a busy road. But as I mentioned, between two to 10 times more polluted indoors, especially in environments where we're creating a lot of air pollution, like, like a dental surgery. So we have to be energy efficient. We have to seal up our buildings. Energy efficiency is also one of the issues with good ventilation. And ventilation is key. It's a key component to your clean air strategy. So good ventilation, bringing in outdoor air, putting it through a cleaning process and putting it inside to, to, to take out then any of that polluted air and create this cycle. We also must think about airflow within that cycle as well, especially if you're using ventilation and clean air technology. If you think about one simple thing, you take about 20,000 breaths per day and the average person releases about 500 liters of CO2 per day. If we don't ventilate, what happens to that? Then we end up being in an indoor environment where we're not taking enough oxygen in because there's so much CO2. So a really simple and nice way to think about this is that we are constantly creating air pollution. Therefore, we need to have a clean air strategy, which in my mind, as an indoor generation, we should all be living with clean air technology and good ventilation. So recommended solutions, good ventilation is paramount, especially in businesses. Decide what air pollutants are important for you to deal with. So what air pollutants are you creating in your line of work and therefore look for a technology that you choose that is proven to deal with the pollutants concerning you right now we are we are obviously obsessed with covid19 and and rightly so it's it's an issue that we have to solve and we have to try and keep ourselves our families our patients our people safe from it but look a little bit further into the future with this if we're choosing a technology, try and get as broad a range in clean air technology as we possibly can. Virus kill rates should and can only be given on a single air pass. If we can't show what comes in and what comes out, it's not a kill rate. Then we're only showing how much we reduce a virus load. 
So very important to distinguish that. The right airflow is of paramount importance. So in your room, decide what the best way of controlling the air is, how you're going to drag it away from people, where to position your clean air technology. A good manufacturer will help you with this. Now, I've mentioned Radicate and the virus killer technology. I'd just like to take a few moments to explain what this technology is. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this was funded by the Korean government in 2004 as a direct result of the SARS coronavirus outbreak uh, in 2003. And South Korea being hailed as one of the countries um, uh, that have done so well at flattening the coronavirus curve uh, I'd love to, to sit here and tell you it's all because of the virus killer technology. Um, they had great response, critical response. They traced the virus very well. They did everything right. And one of the reasons they did everything right is because they were prepared. They've been caught short before and they weren't caught short this time. But our virus killer technology has over 370,000 commercial installations in South Korea with most hospitals, universities, government buildings, all buying into this technology because it's proven to kill viruses. And if you look at the image here on the slide, you can see in this unit, which is a virus killer 102, we take in the air at the bottom, it goes through a series of me mechanical filters and then a fan. So that bottom half is a typical air purifier, filters and a fan. And you get most of the air pollutants within those filters. But then the air pollutants that get through the filters will come up into our reactor chamber. Uh, this is photocatalytic oxidation. We use multiple, multiple levels of ultraviolet lights. We amplify the efficiency and the effectiveness of that ultraviolet radiation by using refraction and reflection. So we use specially cut out hexagon shapes in our titanium dioxide filters that refract the light, creating all these laser beams almost within that chamber. And then we surround our chamber in a reflective material that amplifies the UV radiation. If you've ever stood in between two mirrors and you see your reflection many, many, many times, Think about the same way that we're trying to increase the ultraviolet radiation. The more ultraviolet radiation we have, the more hydroxyl radicals we create for the oxidization process, and the, the more powerful that UV radiation for breaking the DNA of bacteria and the RNA of viruses. So the combination of our patented reactor cell has been formulated, and it's the same within all the different units, just different sizes of the reactor chamber to cope with different levels of airflow. Um, but, but it's ultimately made to give that single air pass kill rate. And, and also uh, to be as efficient as possible on neutralizing any gases that go through there. So air purification is the initial part of, of the Radicate technology anything that gets through filters we aim to then destroy or neutralize within our reactor chamber and then finally once we've done that process very important for us and and we worked with the the um, aerospace university in south korea to figure out how do we best then deliver that air to create the most effective and efficient airflow is once we've processed the air we put it back out into the room in the most efficient way as possible. And then units are tailored to the environment. So quite typically, a Radicate distributor will be trained on how they need to specify which unit for what market sector and also for the particular indoor environment and then help the customers with where to site those units once they've been specified to ensure maximum and efficient airflow. So that was uh, me, Richard Greenwood, uh, founder of Radicate. I hope you found that session very useful about clean air technology uh, within the dental sector.
Great. Thank you so much, Richard. That was a wonderful overview of the technology. Uh, as I said at the very beginning, I'm very excited about uh, the opportunity to bring it to the United States, uh, and Henry Schein will be doing that uh, shortly. So we look forward to more. Uh, several questions we have uh, coming in, and appreciate your time and attention. You're in Great Britain now, correct? So it's a little different time zone for you. Um, the testing that was done, uh, you know, with the name Virus Killer, it certainly is a very strong <laughs> name and uh, is what it does. Um, can you go over some of the viruses that have been tested? I know the current uh, COVID, um, causing COVID-19 is difficult to test, but how does that relate to similar viruses or what other viruses have you tested? Sure, well, in order to, 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 to kind of classify all respiratory viruses, there are four virus groups that have to be tested. Um, adenovirus, poliovirus, influenza virus, and coronavirus. And we've tested against all four of, of those virus groups. Um, we actually test ag tested against SARS coronavirus, which as I mentioned in the presentation, is extremely similar in size and envelope of COVID-19 and is accepted as a substitute of COVID-19. So, so we've tested against SARS coronavirus and all of our tests were performed on a single air pass. So what goes into our chamber and what comes out at the other end. And we achieved uh, over a 99.9999% kill rate. Yeah, that's great. And uh, certainly, I think it's a misnomer in most of the air purification and they use the term, the, you know, the HEPA filter 99.97%. But as you mentioned, that's in a chamber over a period of time. Is that correct? Most of that's the air right. purification. What, that, what is that right. time period they typically circulate? Well, it, it, it really depends. There is no fixed formula on this, which is why it's important to, to check the test results of a technology before, before purchasing them. Uh, another common misconception that we've seen lots of recently is that air purification devices, um, testing on bacteria, which we know uh, are big enough for, 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 for HEPA filters to trap very adequately, um, and then giving a, a pathogen test re re result. So saying efficiency against uh, COVID-19, for example. Um, there's more of a science to this. Uh, you know, HEPA filters will trap uh, a lot of that virus, but the reality is, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't take much of that virus load to infect somebody. So, you know, saying you trap nearly all of it, it, it for me, it, it's not good enough. You have several uh, different models available, right? Primarily what we're bringing in uh, for the dental office, the one shown here, or similarly, the 103 um, is for larger spaces, typically a waiting room size. Correct. Air would yep. flow. And then can you explain some of the other options that you have for uh, dental operatories? So one of the most popular uh, units uh, for dental surgeries right now is our wall mounted unit, the VK401. Um, and that pulls air towards it and it releases air out of the sides. So what we want to try and do here is create the right kind of airflow by letting that air follow the, the, the curvature of the room and then create an effective and efficient uh, airflow, which has a direct result on effective and efficient room air exchanges. So typically the way we will suggest those are positioned is at the foot end of the patient above seated head height. So we want air to flow away from the patient, the dentist, the dental assistant, into the unit, it gets processed, and then it's pushing air round back and creating the right kind of airflow to enhance that efficiency, remove air from the danger zone and replace it with clean air. What we're, we're actually in the process of right now is uh, enhancing this model. Um, we have created uh, some uh, laminar airflow attachments um, uh, that can be placed on the sides of this uh, VK401 
And not only will they give an increased air velocity, um, but also greatly increase that laminar flow of air, which will attach to the walls and, and come back round in a smaller space like, like a dental surgery. Um, we're planning on making this upgrade as a standard uh, part to, 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 to the VK401. And really, because we're talking so much about two things, uh, airflow control and single air pass kill rates, we're doing a lot of work at, at Radicate at the moment with airflow engineering, because it's such a vital part of, of your, the efficiency of, of any piece of clean air technology. So the VK401, the most popular unit we're putting out to, to the dental world at the moment, and we've just put a great upgrade on there, which is, which is the, 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 the new side uh, deflectors. It's actually an effect called the Kawanda effect that we're trying to achieve. Um, and that states that if you, if you push air at force near to a surface, i.e. with this in, in a, a wall, then it will stick to that surface and and that is exactly what we want to do in this instance so laminar airflow the Kawanda effect really taking airflow engineering to a new level within a piece of clean air technology because it's so so important it's not just about putting the biggest fan and a filter into a box you know it's 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 about how you're controlling that airflow and what you're trying to ch achieve in in a given space uh, great Great information. Uh, one of the questions was also, where do they start uh, in a dental office? My assumption is most people do not know what their current airflow is with their HVAC system. They look at a supply and a return and they assume, you know, air takes the, the quickest and laziest route to get there. Um, what is something they can do to really look at? Are there dead zones? You know, we talk about the air exchange rate as well, uh, but there could be dead zones or obstacles in the way or some air that never gets exchanged, correct? If there's no ventilation. Uh, and you said airflow is very important. We don't want to um, compete against the proper airflow by putting an air purifier in the wrong spot. So where would an office start to see where their current airflow is and to know where they need some supplement? Well, I think a really good start is this. Look at what your maintenance schedule is for your current uh, uh, ventilation system. Uh, what we find so often is that uh, the maintenance schedule and certainly filters that are put up there um, uh, are sometimes causing a problem. So, so there's lots of studies again available online showing microbial growth within within filters mm -hmm. within within HVAC and ventilation systems. And what 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 happens is if you think about this, uh, if you are trapping any microbial load onto a filter, and then you're trapping organic matter and a level of moisture, which, which all of those ventilation systems are doing, is the perfect breeding ground for, for that microbial matter. And, and within, within weeks, you can start to have microbial growth on those filters. So, so regular filter changes and regular ventilation maintenance is an absolute must. Uh, and, and can't stress that enough, because if you've got microbial growth on your filters, then it's compromising that filter, number one. Um, it's worth just, just, just trying to get somebody out and make sure that those filters are properly fitted, because air takes the easiest route. So, so if you've got compromised filters or they're not properly fitted in there, it's not doing what you think it's doing. So, so stage one, if you have a ventilation system or a central air conditioning system, it's just looking at that system, you know, get somebody in and get an evaluation done and see, is it as good as it can be? Because if you're bringing in air from outdoors, then it needs to be as clean as it possibly can. The second part to this is not so much with centralized AC systems, um, but recirculating AC systems, so an AC system that is taking the air and recirculating it, kind of the small AC system that you'll have in a single room, uh, you then need to think about how is the air moving? So where is it pulling into and where is it pushing out from? And then if you're going to site a piece of clean air technology, ideally you'll want the airflow that that air conditioning system is creating to enhance the air 
being pushed into that piece of clean air technology. So a lot of common sense has to be applied here. And, and certainly uh, the manufacturers or distributors or, or sales agents of such clean air technology uh, will be able to advise in, in best positioning of that as well. So, so good ventilation uh, strategy involves a well-maintained system, number one. Number two, try and enhance the airflow of any clean air technology, not, not counter it. Great, great. And, and when we look at um, different technologies used, you mentioned UVC and then also PCO or photocatalytic uh, oxidation. In your ch reaction chamber, you actually have both going on, correct? So you can create these radicals, but also uh, deactivate them with just the UVC light. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, another common misconception when you talk about radicals, people people tend to get a little bit worried. Is there something being released from the unit? And if you look at ozone, for example, it can last for it can last a long time in the air. Mm -hmm. Different circumstances uh, give it a longer lifespan uh, and can be dangerous to people, plants, animals. But hydroxyl radicals last a split second, which is why uh, we use them in our reactor chamber. So nothing, no radicals come out of the chamber. Um, you know, we also test the chamber, so no UVC leakage uh, is out of the chamber. Everything happens within that chamber. And if you, again, think about uh, how complex that chamber is, the amount of times other technology owners have said, you're overcomplicating this. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're not overcomplicating it. We're just doing it properly. Um, my history is that I had a, a consultancy firm for a long time before I moved into clean air technology um, uh, for, for several reasons. One of the reasons being my father developed uh, COPD, a lung disease, and, um, and I wanted to, to protect him as, as well as I could, knowing that he was very susceptible to viruses. This was one of the areas that I, I started to look at. And um, I found lots and lots of filter uh, air purifier products, but, but not much technology. And eventually I, I, I came across uh, photocatalytic oxidation and thought, this is a great technology. But I struggled to find many people who were doing it properly until I found uh, our partners in South Korea uh, and saw what they were doing, saw the test results and thought, this is, the, this is for me, it still is and was then the best clean air technology I've ever seen, um, which is why I, I hung my hat on it, uh, joined forces with them, and, 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 and we created Radicate to, to get that technology around the world. Um, so yes, UVC in our chambers is, is a key component to this. And then lots and lots of, 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 of titanium dioxide filters. In fact, in a 102 unit, there's 170 titanium dioxide filters and 16 UVC lamps um, because that's what we need to, to maintain this single air pass kill rate. And uh, very good. And, and would the inoperatory, the largest seller for you, the 401, um, does that have the single pass kill rate? Absolutely. As well? So, okay. so smaller reactor chamber because it's dealing with, with less airflow. Okay. So in that unit, there are eight UVC lights, which is a lot of UVC for, for a relatively small box. You can see behind me, this is, this is ah. a VK401 product there. Okay. So not huge. It's got uh, HEPA filtration, activated carbon, um, eight uh, ultraviolet lights, and around 40 uh, nano titanium dioxide filters in there as well. So, so it's a box full of technology. And on, on your systems, how do you know when uh, filters need to be changed or uh, bulbs need to be replaced? R really simple countdown mechanism built into the units. So when a filter needs to be changed, uh, the unit will, will give you a small alarm saying filt, um, meaning if you, the filter needs to be changed, when the reactor chamber needs to be changed, which is every 8,000 hours. Okay. Um, and in a typical dental surgery, that's probably every three years. 
um, mm. uh, the reactor cell needs to be changed. And, and again, it will alert you. There's also a countdown that you can see for how many, how many hours the unit's been running. Um, so you can preempt this by keeping an eye on the countdown saying, okay, I need, I need a new filter in 20 hours. I need a new reactor chamber in, in so many hours. One of the questions we got was the little blue light that's behind you is you're not only the founder, but also a customer. Um, that is not any es escaping UVC, correct? That's no, an that's, LED light? That's, that's clever marketing. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a blue LED light uh, that you can see. Just and, that it's on. Um, yeah. Just aesthetics. And it just gives, I mean, so many people say uh, it gives the impression that something's happening there. You know, it's cleaning yeah. something. Um, but yeah, it's, it's LED, not UV. Yeah. Do you recommend um, keeping these on in dental offices 24 7? No, only, only during hours of operation. Okay. So, so in a typical dental uh, surgery, you're going to get an air exchange less than 10 minutes. And so certainly with the, the, the VK401, we've engineered it so it, it, it's very quiet. And then therefore we recommend to use it on its highest fan setting. There's three fan speeds, use it on this highest fan setting. It's not going to disrupt uh, the indoor environment on its highest fan setting. So you're going to maximize uh, the efficiency. Uh, a lot of their purification devices on their highest fan setting are just too loud. So, so you okay. keep them on the low fan setting. Um, uh, but, but before the dental surgery opens, uh, put the units on, give a, one or two or three air exchanges, and then at the end of the day, uh, uh, turn them off. I, I wouldn't recommend leaving them on overnight. You just don't need to. Okay, great. And um, the unit behind you, the 401, um, you mentioned it was wall mounted, but it can also sit on a desk or a counter as well. That's right. Excellent. I've got that just sat on a, on, on, on a counter um, because it's not so important for me to have that in the ideal position in this room. Mm -hmm. um, whereas for a dental uh, lab, you want it above seated head height, foot end of the patient. And it, it's not, it's, it doesn't have to be exactly mounted there. It can be off to the left or the right. Um, but, but yeah, it's a little bit more important that you get the right kind of height so that you're, you're pulling the air up and away. Uh, two ways, really, you want to control the flow of air, either up and out of the danger zone or down and out of the danger zone. Um, if you're using it like I'm using it in my office, then it's perfectly fine being stood on a counter. Okay. And it can also sit on a stand, I understand, too. Like That's right. Yeah. So the so, wall of windows. Yeah. That, that, that's correct, yeah. So, so uh, typically a, a, a TV stand, the, the lights you'll see maybe an exhibition with a, with a television on, um, very easy to mount a, a VK401 unit on something like that. Um, also gives you a lot more flexibility with a stand of where you, where you want to position the unit. And if you wanted to take it into, into another area, it's very easy to roll around like that. So, so okay. yeah, quite a few people have, have mounted them on stands like that. Well, that's great. And just as you were very happy to find the South Korean uh, company, we were, are extremely happy to find you uh, and your group. And we look forward to an introduction in the United States uh, very shortly. So Richard, I want to thank you so much for your time today and expertise and uh, uh, your search for uh, providing people cleaner air. I appreciate your company, your expertise, and we look forward to working with you in the future. And okay. just to say that we're also extremely delighted that we've got Henry Schein as our partners, uh, specifically for the dental sector, but also in some other sectors. Um, we're having a, a, a great uh, roadmap, a great partnership so far in some other countries. And um, yeah, very excited about entering the US space. So, so thank you for your time today as well. Oh, absolutely. And I know everyone listening, Henry Schein on their website has a air purification section where the information on Radicate is also uh, Correct. Yeah. included. So again, I wanna thank you for your time today and we certainly all appreciate the expertise, the information and you know, providing dentistry a solution that really works. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you.